In this video, we'll start building everything that we can interact with in the world. We'll be laying the foundation for items, enemies, chests, stores, pretty much anything that you can think of. We'll also make sure that we can focus an object and follow it around. Let's get started. So the first thing that we want to do is go to our scripts folder and define some kind of interactable object. Let's create a new script called interactable and let's open it up. Now the idea is that this will be a base class that all objects the player can interact with will derive from. And so we need to think about what our interactable objects such as items, chests and enemies will have in common. So let's start by deleting our two using tags at the top and let's also delete our two methods. Instead I want to go ahead and add a public float which we will call the radius. And we can default this to say three units. This is going to be the distance that specifies how close our player needs to get to the object in order to interact with it, whether that be picking up an item or attacking an enemy. And a cool little trick here is that we can actually visualize this in the editor. All we need to do is create a function called on draw gizmos selected. And you need to write this in the exact same way because it's a callback function used by Unity. And in here we can draw graphics in the scene. First off, let's set our color to a color dot yellow and let's then use gizmos dot draw wire sphere. Here we need a center for our sphere which is just going to be our current position so transform dot position and a radius and for that we'll just use our radius. So now when we save this and head into unity we can go ahead and create an interactable object. Let's right click on our hierarchy go 3d object and let's create a sphere. Let's then snap to the top here and go into orthographic view and let's place this somewhere on our bridge. Let's also look at it from the side in order to place it just above the bridge. Let's now add the interactable component to this object. And you can see now in the scene view that this wire sphere appears and it will update as we change our radius. So now we've defined a way to turn an object into an interactable object. And that means that we can actually go inside of our player controller. In here we can go to the update method and at the bottom of that we check for a right mouse button click. We want to check if we hit an interactable and we can now do that. We can use hit.collider.getComponent and the component that we want to check for is our new interactable component. We can then store this in a variable. So let's make an interactable. Let's just call it interactable as well and set it equal to our get component call. And then here, if we did hit an interactable, we want to set it as our focus. Well, we can check if we hit an interactable by going if interactable is not equal to null. Meaning if we actually found an interactable component on what we hid, well then we want to set it as our focus. So let's create some kind of method that will allow us to do that. Let's put in a set focus method and let's feed our interactable into that. Then below our update method, we can go void set focus. And as an argument, we'll take in an interactable. Let's call it our new focus. And how do we set our focus? Well, first let's go to the top here and let's define a variable that will keep track of what we currently have focused. So let's create a public interactable and let's call this our focus. Then when we set our focus, we can simply set focus equal to the new focus. In the same way, we also want to be able to defocus from objects. We'll do that whenever we press the left mouse button. That's up here. When we press left mouse, we want to move to a certain point and stop focusing any objects. And so let's call another function here called remove focus. And we can go ahead and create that as well. Void remove focus. And here we'll just set our focus equal to null. So let's go into Unity, hit play, and let's focus on our player. And you can see by default, we have no focus. If we now right click on our sphere, you can see our sphere is set as the focus. And if we then start moving, it's set back to null. But whenever we focus something, we also want to move our player towards it. To do that, we'll have to tell our player motor where to move. Now you might think that we can simply go in here and call motor.moveToPoint and then move to the point of our new focus. However, this will only move our player once. If our focus is an enemy, he might be moving as well. And so we can't just move to a single point. Instead, let's go into our motor and add support for tracking a target. Let's create a public void called follow target. We'll take in an interactable, which is going to be our new target. We'll also create another public void. This one will be called stop following target. So let's now go to the top and add a variable for the current target. Let's make this of type transform and call it target. Whenever we want to follow a target, we'll now set our target equal to the new target dot transform. And when we stop following it, we want to set target equal to null. 
So now we should be changing this variable to whatever our focus is. But we need to also update our destination on our agent. If you want to be very performant, you could do that in a coroutine and so only update the position a few times a second. I'll have a link for using coroutines in the description. In this example, we'll just use the update method. Here we'll check if our target is not equal to null. And so if we have a target, we want to access our agent set the destination for that agent, and the point that we want to use is our target's current position. So now our player motor should have the functionality needed. We simply need to go into our player controller, and when we set a new focus, we want to call target, and the target that we want to follow is our new focus, and inside of remove focus, we can go target. Now if we save these scripts, go into Unity and hit play, we should be able to right-click on a sphere to focus it, and our player will move to it. And if we take our sphere and move it, our player will follow. You will see, however, that our player only stops once he's inside the sphere. To get rid of this error inside of our player motor, once we start following a target, we'll access the agent, agent dot, and here we can set the stopping distance. So we'll set stopping distance equal to our new target's radius. And here we wanna make sure that we always get inside of the radius, not just on the border. So we'll just multiply this with something like 0.8. When we then stop following the target, we'll set our stop and distance back to zero. Let's now save that, go into Unity and hit play. We should see that we still move accurately when moving around. And when we then move to the sphere, our player stops at the appropriate distance. There is one slight problem with this, however, and that is we can still move our sphere inside of the stopping distance and our player will not change rotation until we get outside a certain radius. To fix this, let's handle rotation ourselves whenever we are following a target. We can do that by going to the agent and setting update rotation equal to false. Then when we stop following the target, we can set update rotation back to true. Then inside of our update method, whenever we set the destination for our agent, we'll also go ahead and face the target. And this of course involves a tiny bit of math. Let's create a method called face target. Here we want to get the direction from our position to the target's position. We'll create a vector three called direction and we'll set it equal to our target's position minus our current position. If this is confusing to you, I have a video on vector math that I suggest you check out. We then want to normalize this vector, then we'll turn the direction into a rotation. We'll store this rotation in a quaternion called look rotation and set it equal to quaternion dot look rotation. Look rotation takes a vector with a direction and looks in that direction. We could just pass in direction here, but I don't want our player to look up and down. To avoid that, we'll create a new vector three where we pass it our direction dot x then on the Y, we'll leave it at zero. And on the Z, we'll pass in direction dot Z. Then finally, we can set transform dot rotation equal to our look rotation directly. Or if you want to smooth this out, we can use quaternion dot slurp. Slurp allows us to spherically interpolate between two points. We want to go between our current rotation and our look rotation. And we'll do this using time dot delta time multiply it with a speed. And I'm just going to hard code in a five here. Again, this part is fairly math heavy. We get a direction towards our target. We find out how we should rotate ourselves in order to look in that direction. And we make sure to avoid any changes in direction on the Y. And we then smoothly interpolate towards that rotation. Let's now save this, go into Unity and hit play. And you should now see that when I focus our sphere, voila, it will always face our sphere, even though we aren't outside of our stopping distance. And it will also make sure to do these changes in rotation smoothly. So now we can move towards our interactable, but we don't have much interaction going. To do that, let's go inside of our interactable script. And in here, we want to know whether or not we're currently being focused. This way we can check if the player that's focusing this object is close enough to interact with it. So let's create a bool. Let's call it is focus and set it to false by default. And let's also create a transform called player. Then we can create two methods. First, a public void. This is going to be the on focused. And here we'll take in a transform, which is going to be the player's transform. Inside of this method, we'll set is focus to true and we'll set the player equal to our player transform. Similarly, we'll create a public void called on defocused. And here we'll of course set is focus to false and our player variable to null. Then we'll create a update method. And here we can check if we're currently being focused. If we are, well then we can check for the distance to the player. So let's create a float called distance, set it equal to vector3.distance. 
This returns the distance between two points. The first point is going to be our player's position. The second one is going to be our current position, so transform.position. We can then check if our player is inside of the radius by going if distance is less than or equal to our radius. And if it is, well then we want to go ahead and interact. So let's write out debug.log interact. Let's save this, go into the player controller. And here when we set the focus, we want to go new focus dot on focused. And we'll also make sure to pass in our player's transform. When we then remove the focus, we'll go focus dot on defocused. However, there's one thing that we need to remember, and that is when we set the focus, we might already have a focus. And so we need to make sure to defocus the previous one. To do that, we'll go in here and write if new focus is not equal to our current focus, well then we'll call on defocused on the previous one. And we actually only need to update all these different things if our focus has changed. One thing that I do want to leave out of this if statement is calling the onFocused method. That's because I want to notify our interactable every time we click on it. And just in case our previous focus is null, we want to go in here and say if focus is not equal to null, well then we want to defocus it. And we actually want to make the same check down here, so if focus is not equal to null, well then we want to defocus it. So let's save that now, go into Unity and hit play. We should now be able to focus our sphere and once we get close enough, start interacting. And when we then move away, we can see that it stops. Of course, we don't want an interaction to happen a bunch of times a frame. To fix this, let's go to our interactable script. Let's add a new Boolean here called has interacted and set this equal to false. Then in our update method, once we go ahead and interact, we'll set has interacted equal to true. And we actually only want to do this distance check if we are currently in focus and we haven't already interacted. We'll also make sure to set has interacted to false inside of our onFocused method. So every time we focus an object, we'll make sure to interact once. And just for good measure, let's do the same in the onDefocused method. Let's now save this, go into Unity, hit play, focus our sphere, and you will see now that once we reach the stopping distance, it prints out one interact. The final thing that we need in our interact script is an actual method for interacting. So at the very top here, let's create a public virtual void called interact. And down here, we'll simply call it. So let's call interact. Now, what is a virtual method and why are we using it here? Well, remember the grand plan for this script is to have all objects such as items and enemies derived from it. Whenever we do that, we inherit all of the fields and all of the methods. But one thing that we don't want to be uniform across all of them is how we interact with the object. In fact, we want that to be different for each one. That's why we've marked this method as virtual. That means that we can call it from within this base class. In other words, we can trigger this method, but inside of our enemy or item script, we will be able to override it. And so we can put in our own functionality for each type of interactable. So I'll just write here that this method is meant to be overridden. And by default, we can just write out a message saying debug log interacting with, and then the name of our transform. If we hit play, you will see that this works in the exact same way as it did before, but we've now laid the solid foundation for all interactables in the game. Finally, at some point, Sebastian is going to be adding some cool graphics for items. And when he does, he might want control over where we stand and look towards these items. For example, if we have a chest in the game, we only want to be able to open it from the front of the chest. To do this, let's go in here. Let's create another public variable. This one is going to be of type transform. And let's just call it the interaction transform. We'll then insert this in all the places that we're currently using transform. So here where we check for distance, instead of using transform.position, we'll use interaction transform.position. We'll also place it inside of our on draw gizmo selected. And we'll also make sure to go inside of our player motor and here when we start following a new target, we want to use the new targets interaction transform instead. Now instead of Unity, we can simply select our sphere and it might throw you a single error because we currently have no interaction transform. If you want, you can use the transform of the same object or we could go in here and create a new empty and we could call this the interaction point. We can then say move this forward from the object and then when we select the sphere, we can drag in the interaction transform. You can now see that we can control the point of interaction for our sphere. So if you were creating a chest, you would do something like this. And when we play, our player will try and go to that point. But for this object, I'm just going to get rid of it and set all of the settings back to default. To wrap everything up, let's rename our sphere to interactable.
Yay, we made it through. That's pretty much it for this video. Sebastian will be doing the next one in this series where he'll be implementing a player character. Also, if you want to support these videos, you can do so at patreon.com slash brackies. Here you can donate a monthly amount of your choosing. It's cancelable at any time. Other than that, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Thanks to all of the awesome Patreon supporters who donated in July. And a special thanks to Hans Huftoon, Cole Cabral, Will Goat, Jesper Mikkelsen, Thomas Worley, Stone Gamer, Cyborg Mummy, Jason Latido, Derek Heemskirk, Faisal Marify, Robert Bunn, and Peter Locke. If your name's not on the list, I will make sure to include you in videos later this month and next month as well. Thanks a lot, guys.